Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is a, I'm hoping to be, uh, have this be a series on symbolism in the Bible. You know, you've probably heard people saying, well, I take the Bible literally. Well, that's, that's good. But uh, sometimes Jesus used figures of speech. I mean, let's face it. When John the Baptist said he saw Jesus coming and he said, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. Did Jesus magically transform into a four-legged animal with a tail wagging? Uh, no. Symbolism. So, there's a lot of symbolism in the Bible. Revelation, the book of Revelation is filled with symbolism that draws from the rest of the Bible. If you have never read the entire Bible, the book of Revelation, a great deal of it will be shut. That door of understanding will be shut. There is a reason why the Lord tells you the following by the words of Paul in 2 Timothy chapter 2, and verse 15, Paul writes, Study, not just read, but study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, but shun profane and vain babblings. What does vain mean? It means something that's worthless. What is babbling? Babbling is confusion. But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase under more ungodliness. There's even a big push now to discredit Paul. Why is that? Well, Paul exposes the, um, let's just say the religious people, I hate to say that word, uh, it starts with a J and rhymes with uh, news, like newspapers, yeah, or the TV news, yeah, you get the idea. Uh, it's just certain keywords you just can't say, otherwise the uh, powers that, uh, you know, that be will uh, delete your work. I cannot believe the number of videos that I've, that have been deleted from uh, a tube. Yeah, people ask me a question and I'm like, oh, I know what video that's on, the answer to that question, and I'll look for it and it's not there. Yeah, on you, on you know who, yeah. And then when I go to my audio studies, there it is. So I know it's it was posted, but it's gone. So, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Why are people going to be ashamed? You know, there's going to be people in heaven or the kingdom here on earth some are going to be rulers of 10 cities, some are going to be rulers of 5 cities, and some are going to have nothing. There's, it's, Jesus taught that. Some people are going to be, well, Paul spoke of a, well, I believe it was Paul. In the book of Revel, uh, Hebrews, Hebrews, I believe Paul was the author of Hebrews, but I cannot prove that from the Bible. But Paul said that there were those who would have a 
better resurrection. Hebrews chapter 11. Boy, you'll never, never, ever hear a pre-trib rapture church apply this to the modern times. Never. I mean, this, you know, these pre-trib rapture people, I had one actually had the nerve to tell me, well, I don't believe you, you non-pre-trib rapture people because you're mean. Oh, really? We're mean because we tell you the truth, that we expose a satanic lie, a false prophecy designed to make people lose their faith. He'd have probably told Jesus he was not nice when he flipped over the tables in the temple and cast the money changers money all over the floor and took a whip of cords and beat them. Oh, Jesus, you're not being nice. You're supposed to tell them how you them in love. Well, it don't work like that, buddy boy. So, so let's go to Hebrews chapter 11. Uh, let's see. Verse 30. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down. Jericho had thick walls, people. They were very thick. They were very tall. And they went around uh, Jericho, like, blowing the horns, I think, seven or eight times. And then the walls fell down flat. And when your army is on top of the walls... And the wall falls down flat. You ain't got no army no more. And they went in and they destroyed the Canaanite city. Yeah. I believe that's in the book of Joshua, I believe. But if you've never read the Old Testament, you'd never know this story. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they were compassed about seven days. By faith, the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believed not, when she had received the spies with peace. And what shall I more say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon, and of Barak, and of Samson, and of Jephthah, Jeff, they, of David also, and Samuel, and of the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms. You see, God promised them that they would have the land of Canaan and destroy the Canaanites. They trusted the promises of God. That's why King David knew that God wanted Israel to kill the Philistines and the giant Goliath and destroy them. David believed it. He knew the promises of God. He had heard the stories. But everybody looked at that giant and were afraid. Oh, I can't defeat that giant. That's right. You can't by yourself. But God wants you to go in and take the land and kill everything that breatheth. And your modern-day church world will say, well, you know, God wants everybody to be saved. No, he doesn't. No, he does not. There's a reason why the Lord Jesus spoke in parables. It was so that the wicked would not see, they would not understand. Bob, that sounds, that sounds evil. That's not what my church taught me. Of course not. Your church works for the devil. Your church doesn't want you to know that God has enemies. The God church, your so-called church doesn't want you to know that we have enemies that want us dead. They want you to think, oh, well, they could be saved. Really? Uh, Bob, I think you're full of crap. 
You, Jesus wants everybody to be saved. Matthew 13, verse 10. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? Why do you speak to them in parables? Why do you tell them these stories? Verse 11. He, Jesus, he answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. To you are going to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. I'm going to let you guys understand, but them, forget about it. That's the New York Bob translation. Verse 12, For whosoever hath to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance, but whosoever hath not from him shall be taken away, even that he hath. Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they sing, see not. Yeah, they can see with their physical eyes, but their spiritual eyes, they're blind. And hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. God blinds their eyes. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, Greek rendering of Isaiah, which saith, By hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see, and not perceive. For this people's heart is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed. Their eyes they have closed lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and should be converted and I should heal them. But blessed are your eyes, Jesus speaking to the disciples, but blessed are your eyes for they see and your, and, and your ears for they hear. For verily I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see and have not seen them, and to hear those things which you hear, and have not heard them. Yeah. God spoke, well, God the Son spoke in parables to hide the truth from those that were unworthy. Think about it. Jesus came, he did miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle. And who did they want when Pilate wanted to release him? Give us Barabbas. We want Barabbas. And what shall I do with Christ? Crucify him. Crucify him. Why? What evil has he done? Crucify him. Yeah. That's what you get. Blinded their eyes, people. The Lord does not want everybody to be saved. Well, how do I know I'm not one of them? Chaplain Bob? Simple. Really easy. Uh, the answer is found in Deuteronomy 11.13. And it shall come to pass, if ye shall hearken, listen, hearken, diligently unto my commandments, which I command you this day, to love the Lord your God and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. Isn't that what Jesus said? Somebody asked him, what was the first and great command, the great commandment in the law? Jesus said to love the Lord. We'll, we'll get to that later. Deuteronomy 13.3 Mentions uh, false prophets. And he says, Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams. For the Lord your God proveth you. He's going to test you to know whether ye love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Joshua 22, 5. But take diligent heed to do the commandments in the law which Moses the servant of the Lord 
charged you to love the Lord your God and to walk in all his ways and to keep his commandments and to cleave unto him and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. In Joel chapter 2, verse 12, Therefore also now, saith the Lord, turn ye even to me, turn to me with all your heart and with fasting and with weeping and with mourning. The Lord wants us to turn unto him with all your heart. You can't have one foot in the kingdom and one foot in the world. It don't work like that. Jesus said to hate this world. And boy, do I ever hate this world. In Jeremiah 29, 13, Jeremiah, what a depressing book. And ye shall seek me. So you want to look for the Lord? And ye shall seek me and find me. When ye shall search for me with all your heart. When you look for the Lord with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, all your spirit. He'll find you. And amen to that, people. Jesus in Luke 12, 34, he said, For where your treasure is, the things that you consider valuable... There will your heart be also. Is your heart with the Lord or is your heart with gold and silver and pieces of paper that have pictures of president on it? Green pieces of paper with numbers that says $20 or $50 or $100 or whatever. Yeah. Deuteronomy 30, verse 6, And the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart. Not a piece of flesh. Your heart. And the heart of thy seed, to love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, with all thy soul, that thou mayest live. Amen that. Here's a good one. Mark chapter 12, verse 28. And one of the scribes came. Now, the word scribe, um, it's where the English word scribble comes from. It means to write. They were the copyists of the Bible. Before the printing press, they had to handwrite the Bible. Can you imagine writing 700,000 words? And if you made a mistake, guess what? You had to throw it away. Yeah, because, yeah, you get the idea. And one of the scribes came, and having heard them reasoning together, and realized something. When you're a copy, a copyist of the Bible, you're going to learn what's in that Bible, at least the letter of the law. Maybe not the spirit. Maybe you will, maybe you won't. But you will know the letter of the law. Absolutely. You know, they. it's like I, I listen to the, the Bible on audio on my way to work every day. Half an hour here, going there, half an hour coming back. Yeah, it's amazing how much you can learn in such a short period of time. And one of the scribes came and having heard them reasoning together and perceiving that he had answered them well, See, the you-know-whos came and were trying to chick trick Jesus in his words, but he always gave an answer that they couldn't refute. You know, <laughs> you don't want to ask the Son of God a question that you ain't going to like the answer to. Yeah. And perceiving that he had answered them well, asked him, which is the first commandment of all? In uh, one of the other Gospels, it says, what is the great commandment in the law? And I don't know if this is two different events or it could be. But this one asks, which is the first commandment of all? What's the most important commandment of all? 
And Jesus answered him, The first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And if you live next door to a bunch of Satanists, I, I would suggest you move. But hey, that's just my opinion. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. And the scribe said unto him, Well, master, thou hast said the truth, for there is one God, and there is none other but he. And to love him with all the heart, with all the understanding, with all the soul, and with all the strength, and to love his neighbor as himself is more than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. And when Jesus saw that he had answered discreetly, he said unto him, Thou art not far from the kingdom of God. And no man after that durst or dared ask him any question. You don't want to ask Jesus questions. Oh, yeah. Trying to trick him anyways. All right, let's go to the book of James, chapter 1. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes, twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. It's funny, James knew where the twelve tribes were. The modern church doesn't, but uh, James did. You know why they don't know where the 12 tribes are? Because they're lost. Not the tribes. The pastors. They're lost. They work for the enemy. And who was James? Oh, he's just some guy that had a father named Joseph and a mother named Mary. Guess who he grew up with? Yeah. If you don't know the answer to that, you need to read your Bible. Verse 2. My brother, encounter all joy when you fall into divers temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. Uh, Lord, I, I, Lord, I want patience, and I want it now. Now, don't work like that, people. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Listen to this carefully. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. Get on your hands and knees and ask the Lord to reveal things to you. That's why Paul said to study. You know, you're not going to read the Bible one time and, and understand everything. You know, you get a little here, a little there, a little bit more here, a little bit more there. Before you know it, you learned a lot. If any of you lack wisdom, you know what the difference between knowledge and wisdom is? Knowledge is like when you're driving a car down a road and there's a large tree that fell down across the road. And knowing the pedal to the left of the gas pedal is the brake. That's knowledge. Seeing that tree coming up when you're going down this road and hitting that pedal and stopping the brake, that's wisdom. Wisdom is having knowledge and applying it properly. And that's what wisdom is. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. Get on your hands and knees and ask the Lord, Lord, give me knowledge and wisdom of your word. And if you do it in a sincerity, he'll give it to you. At least he did. I feel he did with me. That's my opinion. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven 
by the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. What does it mean to be double-minded? Uh, double well, you go to church on Sunday and you give God 100%, and then Monday you give the world 100%. Double-minded. You got one foot in the kingdom, one foot in the world. Don't work that way, people. And believe me, I'm not saying I'm, I've arrived. No. Boy, I'll tell you what, I struggle just like everybody else, and boy, I fall short. Paul wrote, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And I mentioned that they're fighting against Paul, claiming he's a false apostle, false prophet. Reason being, he gives a lot of warnings about the end times and the man of sin, the son of perdition. Oh, yeah. You get rid of Paul's writings. You don't know that in Thessalonians, when Paul says that we be caught up together to be with the Christ in the air. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13, this is Paul, and they want you to believe that Paul's a false apostle. They want you to believe that the book of Acts that records Paul's conversion is false, is fake. Throw it away, they'll tell you. When all the other apostles met with Paul, they want you to believe that the Holy Spirit failed, failed to tell the other apostles that Paul was a fake and to warn the church. That's what they want you to believe. They're the, they're the frauds. They're satanic frauds. You hear people say, Paul's a fraud. You know you're talking to a devil or somebody that's listened to the devil. Absolutely. Shame. That's the way it goes. Verse 13 but I would not have you to be ignorant. What is ignorant? It means a lack of knowledge. It doesn't mean you're dumb. It doesn't mean you're stupid. It just means you lack knowledge. If I took calculus in, in university, I'd be extremely ignorant because I don't know nothing about calculus and I don't want to know anything about calculus. I only want to know about Jesus Christ and him crucified. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. They're not, they're not in the bedroom with their head on a pillow. No, they're dead. Figure of speech. Concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. You see, if they were asleep, we wouldn't be sorrowing. It's like, give them a shake. Hey, wake up, you know. No, we're talking about those that are asleep in the body. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. Why do they have no hope? Because they don't have Jesus. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so the, uh, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. There are actually going to be people on this earth who are alive when Christ returns. Oh yeah. We might even be the generation that, that sees it. I don't know. Of course, they've been saying this for, you know, 2,000 years almost. Well, you know, 1,900 years or so. Give or take a few decades. And we're not going to be able to stop them. Those of us that are alive, not going to be able to stop those that are dead from coming. Verse 16. For the Lord himself shall 
descend from heaven with a secret rapture? No. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. Yeah, everybody, every time there's a pre-trib secret rapture, there's a shout, right? Hey, everybody, it's the pre-trib rapture. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. To meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. If you're not caught up in the clouds, when the Lord's returning, it's the wrong Messiah. It's the Antichrist, the man of sin, the son of perdition, the beast. Which is why I emphasize this so much and they don't the the paul haters the deceivers they don't want you to know this because the you know who's over in the middle east oh they're they're saying oh messiah is already here uh not my messiah your messiah not my messiah and they'll agree with my words a hundred percent their messiah is not my messiah Absolutely. Their Christ is not my Christ. When my Christ returns, those that are in the Lord are going to be going up into the air to meet him in the air, in the clouds. And it's not going to be a little fluffy white uh, rain or water. Not those kind of clouds. It's going to be a cloud of witnesses. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Witnesses of Jesus. That's the cloud. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author of, and finisher of our faith. Did you know Jesus is the author of our faith? Of course he is. He's called the word of God. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Wow. So how come the Holy Spirit in the book of Acts didn't tell the apostles that Paul was a fake? Huh? Huh? Why? Because those that are railing against Paul are either deceived or they're satanic deceivers. Either way, they're deceived. There's even people now who tell you that, oh, well, oh, I'm a Christian, but, but Jesus wasn't really the Christ. He was just another prophet. No. Jesus was God come in the flesh. 1 Timothy 3.16 Here's another reason why they hate Paul. 1 Timothy 3.16 Paul wrote to Timothy. And he said, without, And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. What is a manifest? It means to, to reveal something or declare something. When you have a truck or a ship with cargo, you have a manifest. You're telling customs or whoever, what is in this truck? What is in this ship? You're declaring what's in this ship, whether it be food or equipment. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, 
believed on in the world, received up into glory. What did the Bible say? What did, what did John, the apostle, say? In 1 John 5, 12, he writes, He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son hath not life. 1 John 2, 23, Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not, hath not the Father, but he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. If you don't have the Son, you don't have the Father that sent the Son. And if you don't believe Paul, who was sent by Jesus, you don't have the one that sent Paul. Christ sent Paul. And if you don't have Paul, you don't have Jesus. And if you don't have Jesus, you don't have the Father either. They're devils. Don't listen to them. Believe the Bible. We got the King James. That's all you need. And all this sacred name stuff. Oh, Jesus, that's not his real name. His name is Yeshua HaMashiach. Yeah, well, you, you want to believe in Yeshua, wear a red string around your wrist and go to a Kabbalah center. And you can have Yeshua. He's going to probably come one day when the you know who's rebuild their little temple. In John 3, 36, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. Period. In John 3, 35, The Father loveth the Son, and hath given all things into his hand. Second John 1, 9, 1 and verse 9, Whosoever transgresseth, transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he hath both the Father and the Son. Wow. Wow. Jesus was God come in the flesh. He left the joy of heaven to come to earth to live an example for us and to suffer the shame of the cross. The Bible declares, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. And Jesus told the disciples, Ye are my friends. See, Paul haters will tell you, oh, well, Judas Iscariot, you know, eternal security. And once saved, always saved. They'll tell you that Judas Iscariot's in the kingdom. Yeah, well, Judas was called <laughs> the son of perdition. Perdition means to fall. Yeah. Oh, it's not Paul. Oh, it can't possibly be Paul. Yeah, right. Paul exposes so many different things. That's why they don't want you to read the writings of Paul. You know, Paul went to Jerusalem. And he met with the apostles. You're going to tell me God didn't tell the apostles, hey, watch out for this guy. He's a fake. Yeah, right. That's why the Bible tells you, Paul says to study Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. You know how many people are going to be ashamed when they meet Christ? First half of my life, I'm going to be really ashamed. But I'd like to think that, you know, at least I'm going to have some fruit to offer. You know, I could be watching television right now. But uh, things of this world I hate. In 1 John 2.15, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. 
And then people will quote John 3, 16. Oh, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Loved. Past tense. God doesn't love this present, evil, wicked world. He loved the world that he created before Adam and Eve fell. Yes, for God so loved the world. Past tense. He doesn't love this wicked world. He loves this wicked world so much that he's going to burn it with fire. Yeah. John 15, 19, if ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the word world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. If the world loves you, there's a problem, people. Didn't the world love Billy Graham? I call him Billy Goat Graham. Didn't the world love him? Why? He, he had an audience with the Pope. He had an audience with kings and queens and, and audiences with presidents. I've never been invited to the White House. Good thing, because probably the Secret Service would probably, probably uh, locked me away and killed me. I don't know. Not because I would present any danger... To them but they wouldn't like to hear my my message of repentance but then again uh the uh dementia patients dementia patients in the uh you know up there now he probably couldn't even understand but you know yeah once you have dedicated your life to satan i don't think there's much of a chance and I'm not saying it's impossible for them to be saved, but uh, I sure wouldn't bet on it. And I'm not a betting man. So, yeah. The guy that founded the Church of Satan, supposedly on his deathbed, was scr screaming about, Don't you see them? They're coming for me. They're here. What was coming? Oh, the angels. They were going to take him to his appointed place. And it wasn't up. Yeah. Heaven's above and the other place is below. You want to read a really interesting book. Dr. Maurice Rowling. I think it's W A I'm sorry. Rowling. Oh, I'd have to look it up. Hold on. Yeah. Beyond Death Door. Maurice Rowling. R A W L I N G S. Beyond Death Door. Maurice Rawlings. Guy was an emergency room doctor. Watched people die. And people were crying, pull me out of these flames. Yeah. But people that believed in Jesus died with a smile on their face. Not so with the unbelievers. He wrote an entire book. Boy, I'll tell you what, it was a very interesting read. I guess it scared the hell out of him or scared him out of hell. From what I understand, he became a believer. He says all these people couldn't believe the same thing. Not everybody's heard the stories. Boy, I'll tell you what, it, it, it made an impression on him. You know, because not everybody died right away. I think it was him that one person was clinically dead, a Christian. They got his heart back working with that uh, this CPR machine or whatever the whatever it was. You know, they they shocked the heart with the paddles, the electronic machine, 
And the guy came back and he's like, why did you bring me back? I was with Jesus. I was in, in heaven with Jesus. I don't want to be here. I'm not sure if that was in the book or not, but uh, I heard that story. I believe it. I absolutely believe that. But hey, what do I know? I'm a college dropout. You know, I didn't go to the university to get a doctorate degree and, and be taught evolution. You know, it rained on the rocks for millions of years and lightning struck a pool of water with all these chemicals and elements in it. And then poof, it came alive. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think so. Here's another work by Paul. First Timothy chapter six and verse 20. He says, O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust. What was committed to his trust? The gospel of Jesus Christ. Avoiding profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science falsely so-called. Evolution is science falsely so-called. So when uh, certain people want you to get a medical treatment and they tell you to trust the science, 1 Timothy 6.20, O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science falsely so-called. And just remember, it's the Antichrist that wants you to do this. They hate you. They hate me. They hate us. Yeah, no thank you. I'm going to trust the Lord. Bunch of devils. All right, let's look at symbolisms and figures of speech. In Matthew 3, 7, I believe this is talking of John the Baptist. Yeah, it was John the Baptist. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and the Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers. Oh, that, what? That's not very nice, John. Don't you know we're supposed to be loving and kind and tell them about the love of Jesus? He said unto them, O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come. What's a viper? It's a snake. A very deadly one, too. Yeah. You ever heard of a pit viper? You don't want to be bit by one. Matthew 23, 33. I think this is Jesus. He said, ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, how can ye escape the damnation of hell? Luke 3, 7. Then said he to the multitude that came forth to be baptized of him, O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come. Matthew 12, 34. Uh, it says, O generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh. Oh, yeah. Serpents and vipers? What? That's not very nice. Hmm. So what are they talking about, serpent? Remember Genesis 3? The serpent came and talked to Eve? Who is the serpent? You listen to most your so-called Bible studies in a demon nominational church. They'll tell you, oh, well, Satan either possessed a snake hanging from an apple tree or he turned into a snake. Is that true? How about the book of Revelation? How about we use the Bible to explain the Bible? It does, you know. And the King James does that very well. 
Uh, I think it was a lady called Gail Ripplinger. Wonderful book on Bible versions. R-I-P-L-I-N-G-E-R. Lovely lady. I talked to her on the phone once. Her, her, her book was far better than the Bible college class I took on the Bible. Far better. May not agree with every single conclusion she came up with, but hey, <laughs> she did a great job. But uh, I think it was her that mentioned, uh, that said, when you look up a word or a phrase, the first time it's mentioned in the King James Bible, you read the context and it'll explain to you, you'll get a gist of what that, the meaning is. Revelation 20 and verse 2, and he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, why an old serpent? Because he'd been around for a long, long time. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. I've had people say, oh, the devil and Satan is two different beings. Uh, you'll have to forgive me if I believe the Bible instead. Revelation 12, 9. Do we have a second witness? Yes, indeed. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Do you know the devil has angels? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. In Genesis 3, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God hath made. And he said unto the woman, And I've had people actually say, Oh, yeah, that's a talking snake. And then when you say snakes don't talk, they'll point to Balaam's ass. Or a donkey. The talking donkey. Really? Uh, show me a second witness. Because the Bible always says, In the mouth of two or three witnesses shall everything be established. Guess what? That's why John the Baptist came before Jesus. He was the first witness to Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. And he, the serpent, said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Hmm. Yeah. Questioning God's words. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Don't touch that tree, because you do, you dead meat. Do you know here in Florida, we got a tree called, uh, I think it's called the manganeal. Manganeal? I'd have to look it up. Yeah, it's called uh, M-A-N-C-H-I-N-E-E-L. Uh, the Spanish name is Man. Manzanilla, Manzanilla de la Muerte, which means the little apple of death. It's supposed to be one of the most toxic trees in the world. You, you, people have just stood underneath the tree when it was raining and, and their skin burns. They call it the death apple. Yeah. Is this what uh, is this what uh, the the Lord's talking about? I don't think so. From what I understand, just one bite of the fruit can be lethal. Uh, some people say it's the most deadly tree in the world. I don't know. What do I know? Is that what they were talking about? God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. 
Oh, wait a minute. First he questions God's word. Now he's calling God a liar. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. The first thing out of the serpent's mouth was questioning God's word, and the second thing was a lie. There's a reason why the devil is called the father of lies. In 1 John 2 and verse 22, who is a liar? But he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ. Is there a group of people that deny that Jesus is the Christ and await another Messiah? Uh, yeah, and they're antichrists. Keep that in mind. Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. And people, if you don't have the Son, you don't have the Father either. No, uh-uh. In John 8, 44, Jesus speaking to a certain group of religious people said, Ye are of your father, the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning. Uh, who was a murderer from the beginning? Uh, Cain. And abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. You really think what happened in Genesis 3 was a talking snake? Really? I don't think so. That old serpent called the devil and Satan. Absolutely, people. So in James 1.5, it says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. Get on your hands and knees and ask the Lord for understanding. Yeah. You know, I was a brand new believer, maybe a couple weeks into the new faith, newfound faith. And I did this instinctively. I asked the Lord to please reveal to me. And I'd like to think he did. You know, not because of anything great I've done. You know, I'm nothing special. Believe me, I've done so many things. If, if the Lord opens the books and repeats all the sins that I've performed, we're going to be there for probably a year or two. Yeah. One day everything will be revealed. There will be no secrets. Nobody will have to pay blackmail to keep their little dirty secrets secret. Because all will be revealed. So I guess this is going to be part one or the introduction to symbolism in the Bible. Because there's a lot of symbolism in the Bible, people. You know, the serpent. What's the serpent? The devil and Satan. You know, mountains, horns, seed, trees, all these things have more than one meaning. Sometimes you got to look at it symbolically, figuratively, figure of speech. Other times you got to look at it as literally. Read the context. The Bible will explain the Bible if you will let it. And if you're using something other than an old time King James, throw it away. Get a, get a, get yourself a Bible. And the law of what they call the, the law of first mention. First time a word appears or a phrase usually will explain to you the what the uh, idea behind it is, the gist. You know, so it works. 
So all blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen.